Now, back to Talk in Muskegon on News Talk 1090 WKBZ, the talk of Muskegon. And it's currently 62 degrees along the lake shore at 51 minutes past the hour. And just uh, for uh, just a, a programming note, uh, this uh, iHeartRadio, is, uh, this is broadcast on iHeartRadio as well as live on uh, Monday through Friday in the mornings. And this uh, broadcast will be replayed at 10 p.m. tonight. I know a lot of us are going to be watching the debate. But if you want to uh, find out what's really going on in the Muskegon area and you don't want to watch the debate, you can listen to this program again tonight at 10 p.m. on iHeartRadio, WKBZ. All you got to do is uh, do the free download app for your computer or your uh, your smartphone. It's and very can, easy to use, and, and it is real nifty. And it is, it and is. That's, that's how I keep in touch when I'm down in Florida during the wintertime. I listen to iHeartRadio and listen to this program and, and Wood Radio over in Grand Rapids and everything else. Uh, but anyway, we're in, involved with some uh, discussions about something that's uh, really kind of urgent in the Muskegon area, and it's some legislation going through uh, the, the uh, legislature. In, in uh, it's, it's already passed the House. Going to the Senate. Uh, so what's the timing on the Senate on the Port Authority bill? Which would be the second step in, in making this locked-in law of the land. Yeah. So the status of the bill, um, it passed the House. Uh, the Senate convenes, uh, oh, October 18th, 19th, 20th, something mm-hmm. like that, for two or three days. It may be taken up there. I'm sure that the uh, proponents will try to push it through. Uh, otherwise, um, this bill will be um, taken up after the election, and I think that the sponsor doesn't want that to happen. I think the sponsor wants to get it get it through, well, as possible. you know, because it it's, sounds good on paper. If you don't do any any reading into it, exactly. sounds good on paper. And, bringing some major industrial thing to Muskegon area. Well, not only that, it's going to bring jobs. Well, you know not just but, the the jobs and 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 this you know the spending and and all the prosperity that would come with it, but all of that is dependent upon. Shipping coming in and coming out with absolutely nothing written as to what would really uh, achieve that. Well, and right. when would really we need to take a step back. Yep. Yes. And, and take a big breath and and start a community conversation. We, Corey. we do. That. We need to do a call to action, a community conversation from both sides to actually figure out what's going on. To have this bill just pushed through on an election year without knowing anything about what's going on, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the people that live on the lakeshore. Hey, if you guys don't know about this, you want to know. So we need to find a place where we can have a community forum. And uh, Miss Holly Hughes, have her there and some other people there to actually discuss our lakefront. If this was a bill, if this was the kind of bill that was just a drop-dead winner, you would want to have everybody knowing about this in advance. You would want to present all of the great arguments and all the benefits but if, in fact, it really wasn't a, a solid bill, it was really unlikely to deliver, you'd want to rush this thing through. And that's what's happening right here. I would just add one other thing. Today is uh, our senator uh, in West Michigan here, uh, Jeff Hansen's birthday. Oh, it is. So this ah, is a perfect happy birthday, opportunity. Jeff. Happy birthday, Jeff. Uh, happy birthday, Jeff. And, and it, contact Jeff on Facebook or give him a call at his office. Wish him a happy birthday and say, Jeff, as a, as a happy birthday, maybe gift to your constituents, maybe you can help us slow down this bill so that we can have that community conversation that folks who have not heard about this before would like to engage in. Yeah, we've had um, uh, closed meetings um, with what's called the Port Advisory Group, some county people, city people, economic development people, um, and uh, that's been that's been uh, happening, and, and it seems that uh, this, this bill hasn't gotten outside of, uh, except for government people and quasi-government people and economic development people, in a selected few, no one's heard about this bill. And I'll bet a lot of you that are listening right now, well, this is the first time you've scares, heard of it. You scare the little and, daylights and out of if me, it was, if, Unless you yes. saw it on the M Live article, yeah, you, where you, I you, went to M Live and asked them to publish it. Went to them three times, by the way. They finally did publish it. So, at any rate... Um, let, me, let me just... I, well, I've got to jump but in Mac, here. Max, had, Max used one word or a phrase... That, that scares the living daylights out of me, and that's closed meetings. Closed meetings. You know, whenever, whenever, oh, yeah. when somebody's talking about creating a governmental unit and they're having a closed meetings and who's going to run it and who's going to be appointed to it, yep. I say follow the money trail. Follow the money trail. Who's got, who's got a money stake in this thing? Who is going to gain from doing this? 
because it's not, I don't think it's going to be the Muskegon community that's going to gain from it. At least, I mean, this is my impression of the whole thing. We need to step back, and we need to have some call to action for the, with a community forum, um, and maybe with the two people that are running for that state house seat, and having them uh, maybe a debate. Well, um, we will invite but, but, you know, but I, I, would, I would love to debate you know, Holly and, on this. You know, Anytime, and, anywhere, I'd love for her to well, sit down and, with me. And, and John, let me just know, jump in quickly, yeah, because sure, sure. that whole group, that Port Advisory Group, there was another meeting scheduled to discuss this bill, um, and and I was uh, it, so the email went out. Everyone okayed it. It's going to be on a Tuesday. Guess who was I was told wasn't going to show up? Holly. Holly herself was not going to show up to this. So what did they do? <laughs> they canceled the meeting. We were going to have this discussion. That was a public meeting. No, that was not a public. That oh, was okay. that was a clo- Oh no, they no. never had any public meetings oh, on this. Wow. No, no, that was man, a, oh, just, no, that was our closed group. Man. Well, let me just let me sum this up. Uh, we'll still talk about it, but I want to sum this up. Number one, this would this would through the authority would allow money and power to go essentially to the government friends because these are all appointed people within the the sure. authority oh, who yeah. would be employees and and all this. It would um, give money and a, and a bailout of sorts to CMS Energy because, of course, they've got a big hunk of land that they'd like to get rid of. They would clearly hurt business of two long-term businesses who have been paying taxes, employing people, and providing services for decades and decades. It would be in direct competition, a government-controlled uh, competitor. Um, and how about this? A brand-new taxing and borrowing authority created out of thin air. If I could snap my fingers, I'd snap them. Um, <laughs> created out of thin air that will allow these unelected, these are just appointed insiders, clearly, who are going to be on this board, would allow them to tax. Now, they don't have, the authority itself doesn't have the ability to tax, but they can encourage the uh, constituent uh, groups, which would be the city of Muskegon, the county of Muskegon, to tax for their benefit, but they can borrow without any help outwards. So here you're creating this brand new body with the ability to uh, to tax, to borrow, and to employ people. What could possibly go wrong? Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like something that was organized uh, a while ago over the what was called the Soviet Union. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, in America, you know. we call it crony capitalism. That's exactly what <laughs> we call it. Crony capitalism. We yeah, call yeah. this crony capitalism. Wow. So... Anyway, I know we're short on time, but I would want to point out that Holly has said that um, we need the a business to get one million tons, so we have dredging. First off, it, that's a backward argument. You can, you know, yeah. you, you need. But most importantly, two other things. It's Number not one, true, by the way. It's not true. There's been 13 harbors in the Great Lakes that have been dredged uh, that have under a million tons, including Holland and Grand Haven. Okay. Okay. And also. Uh, Verplank alone takes under takes over nine hundred and sixty thousand tons into Muskegon Lake anyway. That argument, but the best one is there's thirteen Great Lakes ports that have been dredged uh, in the, in the last couple of years um, that aren't over a million tons. So, so, that, there, so there is money that, out there to do the dredging. I hear that one around town. Well, we need it for a million. We need the million tons for dredging. No, you don't. Okay, Corey, it's back in your lap, buddy. Let's get this uh, community uh, discussion going. Yes. Well, we yeah. have to find we knew that. We have to. Yeah. Yeah. You need to start running with us, and uh, stay tuned to this program because we will uh, get the word out and getting a, a good community discussion going on. Max, thanks for coming in. Always great to see you. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, Corey. Corey, thanks for coming in again this morning. Yes, thank and, you. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. we got uh, Joe Finkler's coming in to talk about uh, a, a shark tank. Uh, uh, thing that's going on down at the uh, MI Hub tomorrow night. So oh, right, nice. right in Muskegon. Right in Muskegon. So we'll uh, talk to you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Catch Talk in Muskegon, Monday through Friday mornings at 8 on News Talk 1090. WKBZ, the talk of Muskegon. From the EPS Security Studios on the Lakeshore, this is News Talk 1090, WKBZ Muskegon, and WOOD HD2 Muskegon.